boy Spencer here. I thought I'd do another one of these videos. It's been a little while and one of the big questions I get is how to do a composite. So I thought we'd do that today. So for example, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, let's say we have an image like this. We have this airplane and we want to take the airplane by itself and we want to stick it in the middle of this waterway here. So this is known as compositing, layering, it's got all kinds of names, but uh, so that's what we're going to do right now. I am going to use Elements, uh, specifically Elements 13, because that's what I have right now. You could very easily do this in Photoshop as well, um, but one of the biggest reasons I'm using Elements is because of this tab feature. It drives a lot of people nuts, so I thought I would show you that. So what I mean by the tabs is if you haven't changed this and you just installed elements, like if we go to open up this picture, I say, okay, I'll take both of these. So I just press and held the shift key and allows me to open up both of these or select both of them. Then I go down here to open. And here we go. So here is the picture of the waterway. And then over here is the picture of the airplane. You'll see these tabs up here at the top. So this is what I was talking about. Now, for those of you that have been doing this a while, we used to have separate windows. So we could just move them around and on the screen. So if you prefer to do it that way, I'm going to show you how to change this. But you could use this if you simply make your selection around the airplane. So if I just do a quick little demo here. So we're just going to quickly make a rough selection. I'm using the plain old lasso tool. So once you have your marching ants, we can do uh, edit copy and then go into the waterway picture and do edit paste. So by the way, we're also in the expert mode and I have my layers panel open over here on the right hand side. If you don't see this down here at the bottom where it says layers, if you click on this, if you don't see it, when you click on it, it will then show up and then you can see here you got your background layer. And now when I did the paste, we have layer one. So now we could grab the move tool, which is this four headed arrow right here and just click and drag and we can move this guy anywhere, anywhere we want. So I'll explain about this other, how to get rid of some of this other stuff here in a minute. So let's say for whatever reason, you don't like this tab and you don't want to do the copy paste. All right. So let's close out of this. So I'm just going to click don't save and don't save. There we go. So it's a preference that we have to change. So if I go up to, now I'm on a Mac. So on the Mac, we go under this where it says Photoshop Elements Editor here. And then I'm gonna choose Preferences General. If you're doing this on PC, you're gonna go under Edit here, go all the way at the bottom and choose Preferences General. So same thing, it's just in a different place. So we got General. And right here, this is what we're looking for. Let's see, it says General. And right here where it says options, this is the way it's going to be set up probably by default if you haven't changed this. If you want the uh, floating documents like what I've used before, especially if you've taken any of my classes, what we've done is we've checked this one and unchecked enable floating document window docking. I mean, is that confusing or what? Okay. So we just click OK. So now if we open up those same images, so let's click on the open button and then again, I'm going to click on the first one. I'm going to press and hold shift. I'll click on the last one. Since we only have two, it selects those two. I'm going to come down here to open and here they come. Now, if you look at these, you'll see that they look a little bit different and I can move them around by simply putting my cursor on the top of the title bar and I can move these. I can bring whichever one I want to the front and I can move these all around anywhere I want. So as you can see, I'm not restricted. So this is the way we used to do it 100 years ago. Um, I guess I'm old school, so I still like it this way. You could do it the other way with a copy paste. But if you like this, you might want to try it. So let's say, for example, I want to grab the lasso tool. And again, I can grab this airplane. Just doing a real quick selection here. Then if I grab the four-headed arrow tool, then I can then click and drag into this other window. So just make sure that your cursor makes it to the other document and it automatically copies and pastes it for you. And you'll see if we look at our layers panel, it looks pretty much the same as it did a few minutes ago when we did it the other way. Okay. So let's say we're done with our airplane over here. I'll go ahead and I will get rid of that. 
Now to get rid of the blue that's around here, uh, that that's always an issue. So what you could do is you could grab the pink eraser and we could start erasing around the airplane. The problem is you're actually deleting pixels, which means if you make a mistake in an area where, say for example, you get too close to the wheels or something and you lose part of the wheel, yeah, you could undo it, but let's say you didn't realize that until you made it all the way around the airplane and then you come back here and you realize, whoops, this has got a problem. You can't fix it. The pixels are literally gone. So I'm a big proponent of using masks for this. So in this case, up here in your layers panel, you have this box with a hole in it. This is your add layer mask um, function. So if I go ahead and click on this, you want to make sure that layer one, where the airplane is, or whatever it is you're using, uh, is selected. It has this blue frame around it, and it's also the whole layer itself is blue. So I can go ahead and click on that. It's going to add that layer mask. All right, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to grab a brush from our brush, or from our tool panel. It looks like a plain old paintbrush. And here's a little trick when you're working with masks. You have to paint with the reverse color of the mask. So if the mask in our layers panel is white, as you just saw, we need to paint with black. So I've got white and black, so I need black to the front. So I'm just going to click this little bent arrow and switch it around. So I've got black to the front. And basically what the black paint is going to do, we're actually not painting black. Is This is black is going to tell the computer to hide those pixels. Um, if we ever need to bring them back, which I'll show you, you can just reverse the colors. This might sound kind of confusing, but once you see it in action, it's actually quite simple. All right, brush. I'm going to use a plain old brush tool. I got the brush mode. And right here, this is where you can choose the type of brush that you want. By the way, if, you, uh, if you're the art kind of person, there's all kinds of brushes in here to play with, but we're going to use the default brushes here for today. You have the size of the brush. That's what these numbers are. I always tell people, if you're getting paid by the hour, use like a three pixel brush, it'll take you all day. Um, so then you have, so you can tell these are hard edge brushes. So you can see it has a very definitive circle, but if I scroll down here, then these are the soft edge brushes. So they got a little bit softer edge to them. So I'm just going to click on one, double click it. We'll figure out the size we need here in a minute. And the opacity, we want that to be at 100%. Okay. And then mode, normal, and we're not going to mess with any of this stuff. So basically, if I come up here, now to zoom in, I could grab the zoom tool and click. The problem is it's going to knock me out of my brush tool. So what I do is on a Mac, I'll hit Command Plus. If you're on a PC, that would be Control Plus on the keyboard. And that actually zooms you in and keeps the tool active with all of your settings that you have all ready to go here. And then, of course, we have our scroll bars that we can get around. Okay, so if I want to get rid of this blue, I could easily just paint on this sky from the other photo that's obviously no good and as you can see it's disappearing so now this is why I like a mask let's say you get in a hurry or for example um, again details maybe you didn't quite see that the propeller was there whatever the intro and something like this happens now if you're using the eraser and you didn't see that and you can't undo it to a certain amount, usually it's 20 undos is what Adobe gives you. But let's say, for example, you didn't notice this till the end of the project and go, holy smokes, you got a problem here. You don't want to have to uh, try to clone this back in. So the easiest way to fix this is if I come over here to my chips, color chips, black and white. If I just click the bent arrow to bring white to the front. Now if I come back over here and if I paint, Look what happens. All that comes back. So really have not lost anything. So that's the nice thing about a mask is you can reverse these colors back and forth to either hide. So black hides things and white brings makes them show up. So the little jingle we used to use for the past 20 years is black conceals, white reveals. And you also notice as you're painting that the mask is getting some black in paint on it and that's showing you exactly what uh, it's hiding and what it's revealing. If you ever need to see this mask then you can press and hold the option key on Mac or Alt on PC and then click on the mask and then here I can say oh well here's a spot I missed so I can just touch that up a little bit. 
And if you need to go back, you just do the same thing. You press and hold Alt on PC or Option on Mac and click on the little mask itself and it brings back the picture. So we'll just say we're just going to quickly rough this out. We won't spend all day doing this. You guys get the point of this. So let me zoom out. So that, again, that was Command minus or Control minus on the on the Windows side. So if I go in here and do a really fantastic precision job here, as you can see, perfect. Airplanes don't need tail feathers, do they? No, of course not. We'll just chop that right off. Okay, so there we go. So let's say this is all actually, you know, the way you want it. Now you can grab your move tool, <clears throat> your four-headed arrow, and then you can just move this right around. And you might say, well, that's a little big. So if you ever want to make things smaller, you can grab the, uh, you can do Command T or Control T, T as in Tom, on the keyboard, and that will give you a free transform. So what that's going to allow me to do is I can grab one of these corner handles right here, if you have it bent like this, it will rotate it. If you just want to scale it down, then you can do it straight like this. Uh, you just click and drag. There we go. Then you can just move him in position. This is going to sound stupid, but don't click anywhere. I should say it this way. Click anywhere but this little center piece, because this is actually what determines the rotate. So if you need to move this, click anywhere but this little dot. It'll save you a lot of hair. Trust me on this one. So again, you can move this around. If you did want to rotate him like he's taken off from the local airport, there you go. You can stick him anywhere you want. Maybe he's way up in the sky, so he's a little bit smaller. There you go. Then you can click the green check mark to say OK to go, or you can click the cancel sign to say, no, nope, that's not what I wanted. So I'll go ahead and click the check mark. And that's the whole basis of everything. You could bring in another picture keep adding to this uh, there is no limit you could literally have hundreds of these little objects all over your screen all over your picture pick one photo that's going to act as your base that's the big thing so like for example the base picture we have here is this waterway so i'm going to add more pictures to this so and the other little tip when you're working with all these layers is if you put your cursor uh literally on top of the name of the layer like this one says layer one and if i double click it will highlight and then I can, instead of it being called layer one, I could literally call it um, something very ingenious like airplane. There you go. So then when you get literally five or six or ten layers of these composite that you're doing, then when you look at these, then you can tell them all apart which is which. So of course you're going to want to save this as a Photoshop file, right? So file, save as... And you're going to put it wherever you can find it. That's always a good idea. I know it sounds dumb, but uh, that's one of the things I get is people email me and say they've lost their files. So make sure you know where it's going. If you're on a Mac and you see this little version, you can click on this little button right here next to the file name right there. So then if you click on this, it will then expand it to the full, what I call the Save As box. So in this case, I'm just going to put it in our demo folder we're working out of. Uh, right here, Photoshop file format. This is very important. You want to make sure that this is what you want. If you're on PC, it'll even say .psd or .pdd after it on the PC. So layers, yes, this is very good. If you're using the organizer, you can check this. If you're like me and you don't use the organizer, then you don't have to check that. And I do use the Adobe RGB color space. We'll tackle that another day, but that's fine if you want to leave that checked. If yours says sRGB, that's fine too. So let's go ahead and click save. And so now your masks are going to be saved. All of your parts are going to be saved. If you want to, of course, push this out to social media, if you want to email it to somebody, in that case, then what you would want to do is do file, save as again. And then, of course, you could save it as a JPEG. I have another video on how to do this for web. But basically, this is a short version. Just choose JPEG and then go ahead and click save. Oh, because I already got one called Waterway, so it's yelling at me. So we're going to call this uh, Finished. There we go. And JPEG and Save. Now when this comes up, you have a choice of 0 or 12. 12 is going to give you the best looking file. It's also going to give you the biggest file. So the magic number is, drumroll, 8. So 8 gives you a really nice looking photo. 
without the heavy file size. Right here is the file size, by the way. So 109K in my case. That's very, very small. Um, you could easily send out 20 or 30 of these and not a problem. Your internet provider is not going to yell at you if you're doing email or if you're doing Facebook or something like that. So just click OK. And that would be our finished one as a JPEG. Um, now you're not going to see it here, so let me hide this for a second. And right here you'll see we've got our, it was called waterway.psd. This is the one that has the layers. And then here's the finished one that says JPEG. And that's, that's the finished, obviously. So there you go. Okay, so that's some options on how you can either use the tabs or you can use the floating windows, whichever it is you like. I did check CS5, Photoshop CS5, because that's what I have. They don't have the option of tabs in there, so maybe Photoshop CC does. And if it does and you don't like the tabs, you like the floating windows, then you should be able to go into the preferences in there and uh, change it like I did here so then you get the floating windows. Alright, so I hope that was helpful. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.